Does RVing heighten conflict? Today, we're going to talk about the realities of living in a small confined space with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and talk about some of the things we've experienced on the road over the last eight years and how we've dealt with conflict living in a small RV. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 333 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who have been crisscrossing all over North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and so much more. So we've been traveling for over eight years now, um, seven of those full time. And over that time, we've learned a lot about each other and about ourselves and, <laughs> uh, you know, about what it's like to live small. We, we thought we lived small before when we lived in an apartment with three kids and, you know, we're in an apartment again now. But an RV is a totally different thing because you are so much closer to everybody. And then there are all of these stressors piled on top of that that involve, you know, traveling and being in different places and all that sort of stuff that can cause you to not have some pretty moments with each other. RVing is not always about the beautiful locations and the amazing adventures you go on. In between, all of that life still happens. And as we started talking about this, I think this subject and doing this discussion for the show, in the past we have talked about, you know, what if your family isn't totally on board with you going full time? How do you navigate that? But we realized we've never talked about like the internal sort of struggles that can come between friends or family or partners when you embark, even if it's for a week or two weeks or six weeks or six years or 60 years on an adventure that has all these additional stressors, right? Like life is stressful. We have stressors in the apartment. We have stressors at work. We're not trying to, you know, say that those are not of equal value to what we're talking about here today. We just want to focus on what it's like to have stressors in an adventure, especially when this is supposed to be a lot of fun, right? And the disappointment that can come from that. Because yeah. we certainly, you know, over that six weeks that we were out on the road this summer, we definitely had some moments. Mm -hmm. Like Things got hard. People have conflict. Kids have conflict. Grownups have conflict. And how do you navigate feeling yeah. disappointed that on my vacation, my family is currently having a hard yeah, time? Yeah. And that I will say, I'll come out right now and say that that's a big struggle for you. Like yes. when, yes. Uh, not to speak for you, but when something, you know, this is something that we've planned for a long time. Yes. And it's something that you've been looking forward to for such a long time. And the kids are acting up or we're not getting along or whatever. That's something that really hits you hard. Yeah, that was, I, yeah, that happened a couple times this summer, especially when we were at Disney and perhaps the expectation was too high, which is interesting because I have always tended to be one that doesn't set a lot of high expectations. When we were full-timing, I did not have a lot of high expectations. I didn't have bucket list things I had to do while we were full timing. I didn't, yeah. you know, say we've got to hit every single national park or we've got to do X, Y, Z, or we've, it was really about let's go wherever we want to go and do whatever we want to do. And that's great. There was something that flipped for me. And this is I reflecting back now where I moved back into that old mindset of prior to full timing of, well, this is one and done. Right. Like we're never coming back here. <laughs> Whereas when we were full timing, it was like, well, we can always come back because we travel and our our home goes with us. And now it's like the work it takes to get us there. Yeah. I'm never I, we can't ever come back. And, <laughs> and I really had to work hard to get out of that mindset because it can create a really negative spiral. Well, if, we're yeah, you know, we're in the we're in the midst of this process of learning 
how to travel differently. We're still like, it's kind of like we're newbies in a lot of ways again, because we're, we, we talked about this on another episode recently, but we we've approached this last six week trip a lot. Like we did approach full timing where we would show up to a location and then just be like, okay, now what? Uh, and we would have the time and leisure to do that when we were full timers and not that we need to plan every minute of our vacation, but now we're realizing, well, maybe it's probably a good idea to, before we go to an area, watch a few YouTube videos or get an idea of like some of the stuff that's around there that we might want to do <laughs> instead of sitting and talking about, well, what should we do today all the time? Yeah. What's John yeah. McGivern say we should do? <laughs> but I, you know, I think for me, uh, you know, I, obviously there are things that that set me off too. And, um, you know, I think for me, a lot of it ends up having to do with, there's a set way I thought things were happening in my head, whether I was completely made that up on my own or not. <laughs> and, and when things are not going that way, um, or I was wrong about those things, that sort of gets me out of, you know, it, it gets me into a funk, I'll say. But like, you know, we're not, we're not relationship experts. We're not good at this. And in any way, I don't want anybody no. to think that like we have all the answers, but we do, you know, we've done this enough to where we, when we're not having a moment can step back and realize some of the things that caused those moments. And, um, and, and we've made a whole list here of some stressors that are out there and involved in, in travel. But what we haven't done is made a list of suggestions <laughs> I, <laughs> on how to deal with those. Because yeah. <laughs> to your point, I think we would be hypocritical if we sat here and told you how to deal with all of those things. We're going to share these stressors and then we're going to share how we have dealt with those stressors. But if you clicked through to listen or watch this because you were looking for relationship advice on the road... This is not your podcast. But, but a lot of it is, <laughs> cool. though, you know, just recognizing what the stressors are and trying to eliminate them in advance. Yeah, right? I, we you know, we have learned trial by fire in some respects. You know, we have also had situations in our lives even prior to getting on the road that were really big situations, life threatening situations. And I think for us that has put maybe some of the other things that you encounter on the road really far down on the list of things to get freaked out about or get stressed out about because we have lived several lives, it feels like sometimes, uh, in really heightened, dangerous, life-threatening situations. And so, you know, when we talk about this, our experience of how we deal with it is is certainly going to be different. But perhaps just opening up this conversation and allowing people to know that they are not alone in these feelings, not alone in these moments. They do happen. Let's just talk about it and let's acknowledge that like it can be tough sometimes to be out on the road with your partner. And yeah, your and, you know, big picture, a lot of this has to do with the fact that you're you're in charge of so much when you're RVing that Too if much. if you were you know if you're flying somewhere that airline is in, in charge of a lot of that it, and you're going to a hotel that hotel is in in charge of a lot and there right. there are definitely stressors in those types of travel that are different in a yes. lot of ways um but but when you're traveling in an RV you're you're traveling with this big expensive thing when we were full-time, our whole lives were in there. Um, and it, 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 there's just this additional thing of like, what happens with all my stuff if I don't protect and, and take care of it. And, um, well, I'm bringing it into, you know, weird and different areas and I'm traveling over, you know, mountain passes and things like that. And when, when you have so much wrapped up in that, there's all this additional, Stuff where a lot of these sort of stressors filter, I think, from that that bigger picture of like, yes, RVing is great because you have so much more control over your travels, but some of the stressors come from the fact that you're in control. 
And I think that there are different levels of stress. As you're talking, I was thinking to myself, especially about the safety or I have all of my stuff with me. I think that there are levels of between having been new to RVing and doing it or even new to full timing and only having been removed from that for a few months versus I've been doing this for a while. I think things like I'm nervous at campgrounds or I'm I'm nervous to use bathhouses or we were just having that conversation with someone about, you know, their fear of using a bathhouse at a campground because they were afraid they might be attacked, which that is a very valid fear to have. And in no way would I want to make someone feel bad for feeling that way. But that is a level of I just don't know anything about this lifestyle. I haven't done it yet. And you become a little bit more comfortable with those kinds of scenarios the further on you get into this lifestyle, right? And just like anything, the more you do it, there are levels of it that you become comfortable with that in the beginning might have been really scary. I the same could be said about starting a business or starting a family or moving to a new town or, you know, even just like having to go to a different grocery store because you know and you've been really comfortable with the one you had. There's always the fear of the unknown those stressors you hope over time will begin to level out and and you won't carry those with you. I think a big part of that when you're starting out RVing is that you're not, um, that you, you may watch all the YouTube videos. You may, um, you, you may be in some forums and stuff, but having actual interactions with other people that are doing it, singing around a campfire, having conversations with people, uh, is a is a big way where you can really start to feel comfortable because you can ask the questions and um, hear other people's stories about their their travels and the things they've gone through and and realize you're not alone. You know, so one of the things that has been very helpful uh, to us over the years, and this is going to sound like a shameless plug, and it is, but <laughs> is is going to events where we've met other RVers and on, honestly, sincerely going to events. And I'm not a social person, um, but going to events where we have met other RVers and, and spent a lot of time with them. I hold the RV entrepreneur summit yeah. really deep in my heart as one of the best things that we ever did, not only as small business owners out on the road, but just as RVers looking for community, that RVE, the two years that we went to that back to back, those two years, the people we met just sitting in a room. Again, we were talking with other entrepreneurs who work from the road in all different kinds of spectrums, but sitting in the room with all of those people and sharing stories and stories of struggle and joy and celebrating with them and their joy and being there to hold their hand with their struggles. I mean, I distinctly remember when I started crying in the middle of a a seminar because we were talking as a group about something that's a real struggle in business and that is serving community, right? And my heart felt like we at RV Miles could do so much more for the RV community and feeling that weight of responsibility. And I got really emotional in there, as did others. And I felt such a a community in that moment. And I, I can almost draw a line between that moment to the creation of homecoming. Yeah. So we, you know, and there have been other rallies that we've, we've been to and certainly felt a lot of those things, but, but that one in particular was such a great size. And that's sort of what we've um, tried to accomplish with our homecoming rally is there's, you know, not a ton of people there, just enough people where everybody can hang out and have a good time and learn from each other and, and meet some new friends and, and all that sort of stuff. So our homecoming rally is coming up. Uh, you got a, about a month uh, before it. So if you're going to be traveling through Iowa or if you're within a distance where you can get to Iowa, it's Detour. right along I-80. Um, so it's real convenient to get to in uh, in Amana, Iowa, October 9th. It's uh, a, a long weekend of we're going to have communal meals. We're going to explore the historic Amana area, which is a lot of fun. Uh, We're going to have trivia night. We're going to have cornhole tournaments. We're going to have different conversations about different aspects of 
RVing, like uh, the RV industry as a whole and what they could do better. Uh, we might be having a solar discussion. We will be having a solar discussion. From will, experts. <laughs> yes, we will. The community is stepping up as well yeah. to host seminars. We've got uh, some RVers who are going to do uh, RVing to national parks. They have been, I think, at this point to 43 of the major, you know, capital N, capital P's. And, you know, they have these goals. They're they're ex, uh, very extensive RVers through national parks. They're going to speak. We're going to do a solar discussion. We're going to talk about how do you figure out having hobbies when you are RVing? Because some hobbies need a lot of stuff. You know, we're going to have that round table that you were just mentioning, along with several other seminars that are going to be led by either Jason or me and then also by the community. And, and there's not- only about 70 of us yeah. that are going to be there. So if you felt intimidated by a large rally and the opportunity, perhaps the missed opportunity to make real connections, this is what we hope homecoming can be like RVE was for us. It's small enough that that you don't feel lost uh, in the in the size of the thing, and there's not clicks and stuff like that, and it's big enough that you can you can just be a a, a butterfly on the wall yeah. and not uh, not have to participate too much, but can listen and um and just just hang out. Yeah. So if you want to meet others who are you know learning and living through the RV lifestyle, we hope you'll come join us at Homecoming. You can just learn more at rvmiles.com slash homecoming. Speaking of community, the RV lifestyle is about community and the RV community is at the heart of our friends at RV Life. RV Life recently celebrated the 1 millionth trip plan with RV Life Trip Wizard, their excellent trip planning tool for RVers, featuring the trusted reviews, pictures, and tips from their RV Life campground site. RV Life also features several blog sites and over 20 additional RVing forums to serve the RV community. All this experience and community feedback come together to help create a fantastic RV trip planner and mobile navigation tool collectively called RV Life Pro. RV Life has marked a milestone of over 3 billion with a B miles traveled using RV Life Pro, counting both the planned RV trips and ad hoc navigation with the included RV Safe mobile app. Take 25% off RV Life Pro at the link in the description for this episode. And you may have seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways, in campgrounds, and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. From award-winning tow bars and base plates to a full line of weight distributing hitches, adjustable ball mounts, and now they have fifth wheel hitches too. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. Visit BlueOx.com for more information. You know, Blue Ox has been a sponsor of of the show for a while, and we're finally going to be having uh, some people from Blue Ox come on the show to talk a bit about some some towing aspects that we don't have expertise in, like flat towing. Um, So look for that in the future. And we're going to be trying out a few products of theirs too, especially as we potentially things, work towards things are changing. <laughs> well, we've talked about this <laughs> significantly that we've, we eventually want to get into like a midsize fifth wheel, not something giant like the saber, uh, not something small like the Ibex, uh, a fifth wheel that is just in the middle, just right. We call it our Goldilocks rig. Uh, so we, uh, we're, we're going to be trying out their, uh, their fifth wheel hitch, uh, whenever we get around to, having a new fifth wheel. So more on that later. No more talking <laughs> right, about that. Let's please. talk about some of the stressors involved <laughs> yeah, in so, RVing. Uh, here's a, a little bit of a list that I put together mm. in no particular order of things that could potentially cause stressors uh, while you're on the road. Uh, first and foremost, problems with the rig, problems with the tow vehicle. You know, Big. those are huge uh, also, route planning, changes to the route, backing up, arriving past your scheduled time, severe weather, being hungry, boondocking when it's when it's way too hot, not sleeping well, difference in driving styles, working together, remote jobs and finding a space to do that job, podcasting together, starting a business when traveling full time together, <laughs> homeschooling. These are just a few of the things that can be a little bit stressful. Major medical situations or surprise medical situations 
situations, an injury, even just spraining your ankle and being sidelined for a few days can really put a damper on your RV trip and make you rather grumpy. Like, yeah, I mean, figure out, you know, think about what it, what it would be like if you had to do like sort of all the hitching and and you know, putting out the blocks and jacks and, and outdoor furniture and all that sort of stuff with a sprained ankle. It's not fun. Right? Yeah, you know, another one I could add on here, too, is when, you know, for some people, when they RV, everyone kind of divides up and has their own jobs. Right. Like I handle this and you handle that. No, and you let's say you've been doing that for a while. You know, what really annoys someone is when the other person comes back into that space and then tries to tell you how to do it. And you're like, hey, guess what? <laughs> Not my first rodeo. I've been doing this for a while. Why are you in here? So, well, this like, is go, a, go pay I, attention I was, to your I was just, I, I keep watching clips of Modern Family recently. I don't, <laughs> I, this, of course, the show's fantastic, but like. There was this one episode where Phil is at a nail salon and he has <laughs> getting his nails done and he's got all of these now he he has this community of of girlfriends at the nail salon now. Mm -hmm. And you know, he, he he's discovering that when his wife is frustrated with something, you know, he she's not wanting she's not wanting ideas for how to fix it. Right. <laughs> and the, and he's like, Oh, I can just say, Oh, that sucks. You know? And, how and, many... and I think, but for me, like, I, I don't want to say this is a man thing, but it's I, a lot of people like to be the fixer. Like they like to be like, you tell me you've got a problem. And instead of me saying, Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. I'm like, well, you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And, and, how and is, you don't like that. No, I was going to say, what is my response normally to yeah, that? It's, it's not good. It's well, it's, you know, I. <laughs> no, it's I mean, it it, it, it is, doesn't work. It's it doesn't not, work. It's not an effective. It's not what you're looking for in that moment. And people, that's, that's understandable. People have different needs. Well, and I think the next time, you know. What I would tack on to the, oh, that sucks, is actually I would also tack on at the end, what can I do? Yeah, well. Like, how can I help yeah. you? Or what do you, how can I, you know, what can I do in this moment? Is there something I can do for you? Because sometimes people just want to be heard. Right. They right? just, you just want to, so yeah. In the, yeah. you know, maybe the next time is it's like, you know, be like Phil. Be like Phil at the nail salon. Yeah. Which I love that you were watching that because hard, like, yes, it, 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 it's a thing where it's like, it's just ingrained to you that that's what somebody would want. And you, it's, it's hard. It is hard. You know? I've had to really, I don't do that much with you, but I do know that I do that with the kids. And I've really had to be mindful about not trying to fix the thing, but saying to them, if you, how can I help you? Or if you decide that you would like some suggestions on how to take care of X, Y, Z, I, I'm here. Yeah. Let me know if you decide that you need that. Like, because they don't want, and I'm thinking about like <laughs> last night when Jack shared something with me and then uh, I kept throwing out all these, you know, you should do this for it. You should do that for it. You should. And he was like, no, no, no. And I was like, ah, and you finally looked at me and you're like, just leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but I know if he would do these things, things See, would be better. See, I recognize better. it when you're doing it to him. I don't I recognize it when and I'm doing it to you. I had to just, I had to be like, he's <laughs> right. I need to, I know he would be more comfortable if he would do these things. And I know that because I've been in that situation, but I also need to just let yeah. him figure it out for himself or not figure it out. And eventually he will though. All right. So those were some stressors. Well, I, so let's, let's tackle. Well, let's so you, get back to our topic you, at hand. But you tackle. You, so that, that was sort of like the, uh, okay, things aren't going right with the, our individual jobs segment of it. But I want, yeah. I want to take a look at the first one you mentioned, which is the things going wrong with the RV, because yeah. that's a big one for a lot of people. It's a stress. It's a stressor for a lot of people before it happens. A lot of people, it's a stressor being concerned that it's going to happen in in the future, and um, and and it's going to happen, right? Yeah. RVs, uh, just like a house, but even more so. And this is not, you know, this is not me ragging on the RV industry, but they're 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 going to break. 
There's going to be, and there's going to be some major issues. There's going to be minor issues. You need to be able to recognize, first of all, what are the major and, and, and minor issues? What is something that you can take care of that's really not that big of a, a, a deal for you to take care of? And what is something that you, you need to pay somebody to take care of? It's a sad reality. You know, we like to say this thing that money doesn't buy happiness. Uh, it certainly helps sometimes, right? <laughs> and if you have, if you, cannot afford and i mean literally don't have the cash not like it hurts my heart to do this i mean when you literally can't afford to have something fixed that's a that's a huge stressor right or it's gonna it's really gonna it's really gonna make it hard for you to pay some other bills or whatever it it might be so so the reality is that you're not going to be able to, you know, quickly earn more money than you have right now. But if you can save up enough money to be your emergency fund in order to fix things, um, that can be a really helpful reduction of stress if you're able to do that. A another is even if you have the money, let go of this idea that uh, your stuff is going to be fixed by warranty service mm -hmm. or your stuff is going to be fixed at an RV dealership in a timely um, manner. <laughs> you know, people are like, well, I paid for this, this, I paid for the warranty and yeah. I, I want it. I, I want it to, I want this company to, to take care of it. And that's understandable, but it's not, it's not solving your problem quickly guaranteed. So if you can pay a mobile technician, some, some, some dealerships and some manufacturers will reimburse you for a mobile technician. But if you can pay a mobile technician, uh, a, a couple hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, to fix a a major problem that would have put your RV at a dealership for months, waiting for warranty work. It it, it unfortunately again, money solves problems sometimes. And you know, also though, you can learn to do some of these things yourself. Everybody can learn to repair things. Um, so you know, YouTube University is a great thing. We've we have there. We've talked about. Uh, things like um, RV repair technician training that the, those different schools have home study courses and in-person courses for RV ownership. So not necessarily being a technician. You can go back and listen to the episode we yeah, did with the, NRVTA. Yeah, with they Tom talk. Henson. Yeah, they yeah. talk a lot about what they do there. They offer in-person and online. I think if I was going to suggest anything like that to mm -hmm. someone, I would send them there. And, you know, so much of what you're saying, and I think it applies to RV life in general, but also to conflict and how we handle conflict is the mindset that we use when we go into it. We say this time and time again to ourselves as we continue to grow our business and raise our children and try to be good citizens in this world that knowledge is power. But at the same time, knowledge is a responsibility. Because there is a lot of knowledge out there, but not all of it is good. Sure. Right. I can know. <laughs> a, okay? lot of, a lot of it's not we, good. <laughs> we live in a world where there is a counter argument or a counter point to everything, mm -hmm. everything, even the sky being blue. Someone is going to argue that it's not blue. And I understand why the sky is blue. So I'm not arguing. Color is a construct. Exactly. Right. That's probably a really poor example. But let's say, OK, you know, this table is made of of is brown. OK, well, someone's there's an argument out there to be made that this table is not brown and it is, you know, something else. And it's actually not a table or whatever. I hopefully y'all are getting the point because I'm doing a bad job of selling what I'm trying to say here. But I think that if you can go into this first major, what is a major stressor for a lot of people that can cause just, you know, I bite your head off about something else that has nothing to do with that thing because I'm really, really ticked off right now that I have a leak and I can't figure out where. If you can try to arm yourself with as much knowledge as possible about the rig that you're owning and what RV life means, for you and what you feel comfortable being able to do. And then also, as Jason talked about, making sure you have a little bit set aside for a technician or whatever work you need to get done, that will alleviate the extra stress 
and allow you to just focus on that one problem, that one situation. Yeah, there there are catastrophic problems with RVs that you're going to end up taking your stuff back for a warranty repair or it's going to be an insurance thing because it was in a wreck or whatever it is. But the vast majority of problems that happen with an RV are something that that happens to most RVs that are fairly common. You've got, you know, your your uh, your furnace isn't working. You're getting a, a leak. Your water heater is not running. This is all stuff that is that is very, very common. You're not alone. And learning that you're not alone and that it's normal and that somebody can come fix that, um, I think can help a lot. And part of that is just experience. You once you've gone through it a couple times, then you then you realize that it's not not that big of a deal. You know, I'm and I'm speaking from a place where I'm a, a person that's always like it's not that big of a deal. So I understand I I I, I empathize with the people that that have that those things are really scary and unknown to them. I'm I'm fortunate to not be that person. Um, but, but I think that sometimes that is, if I can counter that, I think that sometimes that can also uh, be a hindrance or sure. a point of yeah. conflict because you can be, whereas mine is the complete other end of that spectrum, and I feel things a lot deeper than I think I would like to feel them. And I really have to do my best to separate out what is being caused by my anxiety and my fear of the unknown and put that over there so that I can focus on this. But I will say that sometimes what can cause conflict for us is that you're so nonchalant about it. Yeah. And I am so desperately seeking reassurance or a conversation about it to help me feel more grounded. Like we're going to be okay. Here are the steps we're going to take to do this. A lot of it has that to do. We end up with conflict Yeah, because uh, we're just so different in that. For me, a lot of it has to do with knowledge is power and where, where I, I you know, knowledge is also a, a, a stress reducer. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, get really deep into learning the little details about some of this stuff. I, I am, this might surprise some of you, <laughs> but I, I'm really bad at explaining those things. Yes. Like I hear that I, I know those things inherently. I learn things like that. But then in order to explain that, like to you, when you're like, well, why is this not a problem? I've met a loss for words. No, most of your time, your answer is because it's not. Yeah. And I think if anything, I don't gonna, say that. I think, <laughs> I think if anything's going to trigger someone to get really frustrated, it's, it's being told, you know, well, it's not a problem. Oh, and then the flip side to that is because I don't want to make it seem like this is, you know, a you thing in our relationship yeah. as we handle conflict is that again, you said the, the thing that I need to work on is that knowledge is power. And there are a lot of things about RVing from a technical aspect that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy learning the ins and outs of the RV in the way that you do. Yeah. I don't enjoy learning the ins and outs of the truck and towing in the way that you do. I enjoy other aspects of this lifestyle that we're very complementary to one another because the things that I enjoy doing and the organizing and the fitting all of the puzzle pieces together, that kind of stuff. I really, really enjoy. That is not stuff that you enjoy. And neither way is right or wrong. No, no, no. It's, it's just complimentary, a... but we're not very good at recognizing yeah. that the other person, and this is something we have been working on in our relationship over the last several years, both in our business and outside is recognizing that we are two very different people with two really different skill sets that if we acknowledge those and allow those skill sets to work together, they're actually really complementary to one another. Mm -hmm. But but when we let them conflict with each other, they, they can really when throw we, a wrench in everything. And, when we yeah. open our mouths and speak... <laughs> then they're not so complimentary of one another. So, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about uh, the RV itself, how just the mm -hmm. act of owning the RV can be a big conflict. Uh, 
amongst people when they're RVing. It, it can flare up and you can end up funneling that frustration into someone or something else. And now, you know, you're having a hard time with the people that you're there with. Um, over the years, uh, we have learned that um, while in some respects it might seem like maybe back here in an apartment or when you're in your home or something like that, that actually leaving and going for a walk may seem like a really aggressive move. But for us, what we have learned in living so small is that sometimes the best thing you can do is to just put the brakes on a conversation yeah, just separate, yeah. and just separate out and, and get into different spaces because you're, you're together all the time when either when you're on vacation and RVing for a long period of time, or you are living full time and neither one of those things is a bad thing. Like there's nothing wrong with saying, I love you. You are my best friend. I love spending time with you, but sometimes you make me upset and sometimes I allow myself to become upset and sometimes I need to walk away and I need my space and I need to go have maybe for me a conversation with myself on all the things I want to say. I need to spew all those things out so that I can come back. Yeah, and you can go have that <laughs> argument with me in your head. Yes. And yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I I don't think that's a bad depends, thing. It depends on what I'm saying in there. <laughs> No, usually, usually there's conflict resolution <laughs> like, in the conversation, I, in, in the, the, but I don't think that's bad. I don't think I'm yeah. not embarrassed to admit that sometimes I need to go away and have the conversation that allows me to, to say the things I'm really ticked off about so that I can come back so that I can breathe out that fire and just then come back and, and deal with that. Yeah. Cause when you're stuck in a small space with somebody, you, you just, it's, it, even in a small apartment like we're in now, there are different rooms that we can go into. And that's harder in an RV. So getting out and walking away, not like slamming the door no, and being an like, anchor, not, not, you know, and, like, and but but getting out and walking away is it, it. But even if it is an anger, you know, sometimes it's better than yelling the next thing you were going to yell. I guess don't weaponize it. Don't use yeah. it as a way to silence the other person. You know, that can that can be seen as a really dismissive act. Yeah. I'm walking away from you because what you have to say is absolutely pointless to me. That I understand that that if you come from that place, don't take my advice. If you come from if you can come from a place of this is me being positive in the sense that I want to come back and have, I will return to the conversation. Like don't use it as a way to shut a conversation down. Use it as a constructive way to come back to a conversation. Unless it was one that just was, because you know, sometimes, sometimes you're fighting over something that is so stupid and you both recognize that it's incredibly <laughs> stupid that you're fighting over this thing. And sometimes it is just like, okay, we need to figure out a way to just yeah. not be having this. But, it, you know, this gets complicated with kids, too, because you're as adults, you know, we're responsible for ourselves and in, in doing these things. And as kids with as parents, we're modeling yeah, behavior. Right. And, but... and trying to encourage our, we have to allow for and encourage our kids to do these things as well. Like if the kid wants to get out and leave the conversation, that's a positive thing. And you know, we need to be not yelling and I'm not saying we do this right or whatever, but we need to be not like yelling at them, like, come back here. I'm not You'll done talking here, here right or, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> like, um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's smart to let them have the space too, so that they can think about the things that you've said and then come back to it. And I think if uh, talking about other, looking at this list here. And so some of the things that, you know, jump out at me, um, that might seem maybe, you know, sort of like, wow, that would really cause conflict between people. But uh, severe weather, you know, route planning, arriving past your scheduled time or arriving That's late. That's a big like travel bubble. It's a big travel it, like, bubble. The, the planning and the organizing and the actually driving and all that sort of stuff. There are a lot of little things within that. And I, I think 
what can cause conflict uh, between travelers is when the travel styles are very, very different. When the wants are different. You know, if uh, for Jason and I, uh, we would probably travel on a day like much longer than we do, but we don't because it's not good for the kids. They're not happy. They don't enjoy that kind of travel. So when we do have to do it, uh, we have a really good reason behind it. Yeah, or, and we try not to do it like back to back to back. Right. right. So, you know, we really try. I think it's about those sorts of things. If someone has some concerns about potential weather in an area and you have the option to change your plan and allow that person a calmer sense of being rather than shoving them into that situation so that maybe you can see, you know, say, see, I told you so, everything's fine. Um, take the other route. Like, yeah. switch well, that plan up. Uh, it's again, it's, it's like both over planning and under planning can be stressful mm -hmm. and not being able to be flexible with your plan. So we talk yeah. to a lot of people that really over plan their stuff and, uh, you know, they've, they've got everything down to a T where they're going to be, but if, if they miss something, if it doesn't work out, something gets thrown into dominoes, them, then, then yeah, there's a whole lot of dominoes that can, we talked a lot about people traveling to Alaska where that can be a real problem. And I think that is what causes a lot of rig problems is when they're like, I have to get to this destination tonight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this road is requiring me to go, uh, uh, slower than I was planning on. Right. So they they go too fast and they miss big bumps and all that sort of stuff in places where you need to, there, there are lots of issues like that that can be solved by giving yourself the ability to be flexible. So if you're going to be like boondocking somewhere some night, you don't have one option. You have three that are, you know, a hundred miles apart or whatever, or three in the area that you have options. You don't, um, you even though we could travel longer, you know, you look at what you might have done on a road trip where you might have traveled six, 700, 800 miles in a day, even though we could do that, just you and I and the kids, it, it lengthens it and whatever. Being able to do those shorter travel days under 300 miles allows us the room for if a problem comes up, which they have and they do. And often there are things that you get fixed, but you you needed to leave by 9 a.m. and oh, you you have a jack that won't go up and you're not gonna be able to get out until noon. Now all of a sudden you're arriving at that campground at 10 o'clock at night and, and all of a sudden you have to deal with driving in the dark down a county road to get to this place and then backing into a site and all that sort of stuff. When you don't, leave room for problems to happen, then they happen. Yeah. And I think this is a really good kind of space to wrap this conversation up because I think for us, what we're learning and we're learning every single day is that this is about listening, active listening on both sides by all involved, listening to concerns, listening to wants, and then really trying to be mindful of what are my triggers and am I taking those triggers out on the people around me? How, you know, how much of this before I get on this road trip? Again, knowledge is power. I know my route. I know where we're going, I have, you know, just enough information to feel like this is planned without feeling stress if something were to need to be altered. Case in point to that, before we wrap this up, this is how we came to be with a new truck. You know, we were in a situation where it was like, yeah, we could alter our plans and go ahead and cancel this one section of this six week trip that was really not something we could adjust and lose thousands and thousands of dollars or we have to completely adjust everything we're doing for the next 48 hours, focus in on this one thing, get this thing solved, and then take the extra long time to get to this one thing that we can't alter. Yeah. And again, you know, and, it, it was a 
a we were, we were in a privileged position of being able to Absolutely. financially take care of that where in the past um it would have been an even more stressful situation for sure and and those things uh, you know i know but it, it was a lesson learned yeah. about being prepared because we had to walk through the fire of what it's like when you don't have that cushion to learn that we needed to do everything possible and adjust in other places to make sure that we have a cushion. Yeah. You know, that's, it's the, it's the give and take. One thing I want to tack on to here that that is a lesson that I think we learned over time that took us a long time to learn that um, is something that if you, if you know this right away and you think of this right away, it will solve a lot in your travel lifestyle is that not everybody has to do everything. Mm. You can split up. If somebody wants to go do something on their own, that other person doesn't want to do it. Go. It's great. And be comfortable with that. Don't feel anxiety or don't feel left out. Don't feel like you're, you're being selfish by doing the thing. It's, it's great. You should have different wants and needs and, and things that you enjoy and that's totally fine mm-hmm. that you that you do. And it's also totally fine if you go do the thing that somebody else wants to do and you didn't really want to do it, but you're doing it for them. So don't feel like, oh, oh well, we need to separate for everything now. But like we you, can, a, you can sacrifice a bit. We are a podcast of contradictions <laughs> <laughs> if we are nothing else. But it, it, it's it, it's absolutely fine that people want to do different things and uh and the people talk about those things, what they're going to do in advance and figure out what they are and and have some ideas. You don't need to plan everything out, but you need to have an idea of what you like and want to do, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. So this was our discussion on conflict as you travel, uh, some of the things that we have learned and are still learning about conflict uh, as we travel and as we go through life. We would love to know your thoughts on this. If you have some ideas or you just want to share with us as you are listening to this, maybe something that you completely agreed with or completely disagreed with, we would love to hear that. Uh, Please come over to the RV Miles Facebook group, share your thoughts there. If you are watching this on YouTube, you are please leave a comment in the YouTube video. We try to engage with as many of those comments as we can. And of course, you can privately email us if you would rather just share your thoughts with Jason and I and not 13,000 other Facebook members or, you know, thousands and thousands of other YouTube uh, subscribers. So uh, editor at rvmiles.com, we would love to know what your thoughts are on this topic. If you're like us and love pouring through travel magazines looking for your next RV adventure, have we got a suggestion for you. From popular RV locations to incredible hidden gems, RV Destinations is a travel magazine superstar. Featuring stunning imagery, campground reviews, and helpful travel insights, RV Destinations has it all and will have you planning and dreaming in no time. Save 20% with code MILE20 when you visit rvdestinations.com. That's MILE20, M-I-L-E-20, to subscribe and, just like Jason and me, be inspired to start planning your next RV road trip. rvdestinations.com for 20% off with code MILE20. Harvest Hosts is a membership that allows RVers to take a rest from the road and enjoy unlimited overnight stays at over 5,100 unique locations in North America, such as breweries, farms, attractions, wineries, and much more. Easily plan and book your next RV trip and enjoy over $1,500 in exclusive member benefits by joining Harvest Hosts. Hosts. Get 15% off your first year of membership with the code MILES. That's M I L E S. Go to harvesthosts.com to become a Harvest Host member today. All right, let's do this. It is time to check the level of our tanks. And as always, that is sponsored by our friends over at Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the no BS toilet treatment. You can learn more about Liquefied over at liquefiedrv.com or you can shop it in our Amazon store under some of our favorite things. All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? We had the weirdest thing happen at our apartment uh, this week. And it was while I was, so I was down here at the office and then I came home and 
when I came home for lunch, I could not get in the front door. <laughs> you couldn't get in. We couldn't get out. Jack, if you were inside, yes. Jack had just Jack had just came outside for a walk. So I, when I pulled up into the parking lot, I saw him, and he had just come out the front door for a walk, and I go up to the apartment, go to open the door, and could not open the door. And you're unlocking it and locking it from the inside. It will not open. There's, we could not get it open. And uh, so I go, I go find the maintenance person. Thankfully, um, you know, it was a time of day when he's there on duty. And and, yeah. and actually, he was just about to leave for lunch. I just caught him. Oh. He was literally just about to leave for lunch. Oh, so I, I feel bad. Yeah. Um, and so he came uh, over and I thought, you know, maybe it'd just take a minute for him to deal with that. And he had to take a sawzall and cut off our door handle and our deadbolt. It was a situation. It was a big deal. What it turned out to be was a screw had come loose from, uh, from, you know, the, the plate that hold that, that is on the side of the door that the, the little striker thing comes out of mm -hmm. a screw had come loose. And that screw was, had, had basically put itself where the, where the striker thing goes and you just couldn't move the door either way. It was, it was unmovable. Like there was no even wiggle to it. It was totally unmovable. And it's so, it was so weird where like, I mean, obviously if there was an emergency, y'all could got out a window or yeah, something. Yeah, there would have been a screen that met its end. <laughs> yes. But. <laughs> but it was it was a very uh, it, yeah it was a very kind of shocking thing you don't think about like simple things like your door you like when your door stops working usually it's like it won't shut or it won't lock yeah. it's not like you can't open it right no we were completely sealed in by that door we had other points of exit you know three different windows we could yeah. use but. The one door to leave this apartment was completely sealed. That didn't get me thinking a little bit about how, you know, in RVs, you know, a lot of us have RVs that have an emergency exit mm -hmm. window in them. Most of us do, if not all of us. And, um, you know, that, that window might open in a normal way and then it opens in the emergency exit way. And if you haven't opened that thing in a while... Those are hard and sometimes impossible so, to open. Can we talk about yeah. the emergency windows in like the end cap of a fifth wheel that are really high up off well, the ground? You're just gonna you're, you're, you 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 might break an ankle, but you're not you're, gonna burn up in a fire. You're not gonna burn it. But I was just thinking about that. Like if we needed to get out quickly, we'd be able to get yeah. out and we'd be right there on the porch. Yeah. In yeah, something like an RV, yeah. you're jumping from a a distance in some of those but imagine and in our apartment if the if the porch was what was on fire uh let's no, we'd be jumping out the kids window so uh we need a ladder you, in you, our apartment you gotta have plans for these things but we're gonna but, talk about that off air <laughs> but beyond that you know it was just a big it was just a big thing and like it was all complicated by the fact we were supposed to be recording last night ethan had his first rehearsal last night a couple uh a couple RV miles listeners were coming down here to meet us, which we've met a few people and showed them the office in the in last, uh, last few weeks. And that's been great. We're not totally set up for that just so you know. So, but if you are through the area, we'd be happy to, to say hi. Eventually we you, hope to be better set up for visitors, but yeah. Show you everything that's behind the camera, which this weekend yeah. should, should change because Dave and Sue are on their way up here tomorrow. We're to, going to get a uh, lot done. Help We're us get, get a lot, lot done. done. So, but it, it, yeah, it was just a, a, a you know, again, a, it was a day where we had plans and a wrench oh, was thrown in them. Got it. And just, you got to flex and you got to do something different. So now we're yeah, recording do. in the morning, which we, uh, we rarely do. So no. And it's like, we got to, of course, we're not speeding this up as I need us to, but I got to get home and people have online classes. Abby always says, let's make this a quick it's one. It's going to be a quick one. It never it is. Never is. Okay. What's in your fresh tank uh, this week? My fresh tank is a hiker that was found alive in the North Cascades uh, and returned home. His name was Robert Shock, 39 years old. He was missing for a month. <gasps> So we don't have the full story yet because it was just last night that he was found. He was found like incredibly malnourished. 
There had been there had been three different massive searches for him. There have been helicopter searches and stuff. They had not found him over the course of this month. And then a trail cl- crew, a, a trail crew that was working on, you know, trail repairs, mm-hmm. heard calls for help mm-hmm. and, and found him and got him out. So, you know, a couple of the news outlets that I read have have interviewed his mother, who doesn't know the full story yet, hasn't, you know, has talked to him, but hasn't. Yeah. Been able to hear how he survived for a month. This is like that America's National Parks podcast yeah. episode of 38 Days in Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, which again, there were multiple search parties out looking for him. In some cases, just a mile, yeah. if not left closer. Left things behind for him, left food caches behind for him that he never found. And just and stuff all like it that. takes yeah. is we go right, you go left. Yeah. Or we go straight and you go left and you just miss each other. That is incredible. And this is an experienced hiker that was familiar with the area. The trail had changed a bit since he was there wow. on the last time. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's quite a thing. But thankfully he was found alive. We, we report on a lot of these stories where the people are not found alive. Yeah. So this was great that somebody missing for so long was uh, was able to survive and found alive. Well, let the man rest. Let him rest yeah. as long as he wants. Let's not pressure him for this story. It's his to tell whenever yeah. he's ready to or not yeah. to tell. <laughs> However he wants to do it. All right. What's in your black tank this week? Okay. I'm sorry, all of my reading friends, but I am coming for a book that a series that everyone has read or for the most part, at least uh, any major bookstore would make you think and Goodreads would make you think I am coming for it. It is on my black tank. I just finished the fifth book and that is the A Court of Thorn and Roses. You're five books into a series you don't like? It is it is garbage writing. It is at its best. And I love so it's um, it's like uh uh, romanticy or, uh, fantasy romance, I guess. I think we call it romanticy. I'm not sure what the name is for it, but it's, uh, fantasy. It's about fairies. It's like this whole fairy world, you know, there's, there's conflict and war. It's like, it's like if you took (laughs) like, uh, you know, (laughs) Lord of the Rings and then put a lot of adult stuff in it, uh, this is that book. But here's my thing about the book. The book had so much potential. And then the two main characters became some of the most insufferable characters I have ever had to live through. And this whole series could have been at best three books. I have Never read something where I could skip paragraph after paragraph after page after page and not have missed a single advancement in that scene, that situation, that plot line, because this writer, it's Sarah J. Moss, she just loves clearly she gets this contract and they're like, we gotta be this gotta be like five books or whatever. How you know you get this deal. And they're, they want an X amount of number of books from you. And she just was like, well, I am going to continue to relive, relive the same emotional feelings that certain people are having over and over, but I'm going to word it differently each time. It's like a soap opera filler. where it's just drawn and drawn and drawn it's, and drawn. It is. It's a soap opera. It's filler. It's filler. It's filler. And the problem with it is yes, I stuck with it because there was enough to keep me going. And I even, I even recommended it to a friend. He's reading it now. We, we've been chatting about it. I was going to say, you just recommended this like two nights ago. I did because John wanted some escapism and I was like, here's, here's escapism. And also I want to talk to somebody about this. (laughs) So, and he, you're into fantasy and, uh, fairy stuff. So, you know, here we go. The book It has so much potential. Its supporting cast of characters are fascinating, or at least interesting enough that up against what it what becomes the two leads up through four books, they are just the worst. They're so boring. They they started off so good, and I I just finished this book. It is it has been. There's also some like some articles out there that. 
maybe perhaps she didn't come up with this story that mm. maybe this is a book literally almost character for character from the 80s that oh somehow she just magically thought of these people so you know, <laughs> uh this is a really wild wildly popular series this whole genre has really blown up uh i do not doubt that this will upset a lot of people but i uh I enjoyed reading this, and yet at the same time, by the time we got to book five, I was like, I'm really over the amount of adult interactions going on between these people. Like, at this point, I'm just like, literally on my Kindle, Jason, page, page, page. Well, this is not annoying to me because (laughs) I would have never read this. No, 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 no. This is definitely, well, I mean, I I don't know. I think you sell yourself short sometimes on like what you would like uh, when it comes to fiction. The, you always say I don't have the, you know, attention span for it. But I don't really read listen, long form fiction in general. So. I, I think I... I think if you were to lay all five of these books out and add up all of the pages together, <laughs> I, would, I would probably say that I actually read half. Five book series is where you lose me at the first place. Okay. I don't well, care what talking... it's about. It could be about the thing I love the most <laughs> on earth and I would not read. There are some good <laughs> plot points hidden in there. And just when I think to myself, oh, I'm putting this book down. She must realize as an author, boy, I got to throw a curveball in here just enough to be like, here, keep going. You want to know. <laughs> but if I never hear the word mate again for the rest of my life, <laughs> I will be a very happy person. <laughs> okay. All right, mate, what's in your fresh tank? Oh, <laughs> if only you knew what that meant when you said it to me. I, I assume it has the other connotation. No, but. it's no, it's like what they call when the mating bond snaps between two people. Mm. It's the mating bond. And then they just refer to each other as my mate. This is my mate. I, I am, oh, so I am protective of I my mate. Mm, mm. It's not like mating. But in a way it is because, you know, it's mm. this, it, it's just the, these two characters. If I hear them talk about their mate one more time. Anyway, uh, my fresh tank <laughs> this week, I could say my fresh tank is that I'm done reading these books. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now I have to figure out a different. I am going to keep this genre going. I'm going to read something else and see if I like it. But um, my fresh tank actually is just uh, the enjoyable Labor Day parade that our new hometown of the Mile Zero Studio put on on Monday, uh, the Rock Island Labor Day parade, which in, in featured the uh, Fighting Illini marching band. So what you didn't so, know that I found out yesterday oh, was got, that after inside? the end of the parade. So we, when the I, sweepers came yeah, through so, and we left. So, so the parade, uh, you know, it, it featured like high school bands and stuff. And then. The uh, the University of Illinois Fighting Illini band uh-huh. played uh, in March in the Parade. But afterwards, they oh. actually put a whole concert on at Rock Island High School's football field and like, oh, did the whole yeah, thing. Dang. And, yeah, we should have went to that and well, didn't know about it. They didn't advertise that. Oh. I don't know how we missed that. It was it was really great. It was a lot of fun. Um, it, as we are learning with. Small town life, uh, smallish town life, I should say. We saw people we knew, marching family. <laughs> marching family. <laughs> marching family. Can't, can't be an Epperson here and not run into someone you know. Uh, and then also uh, someone from the Rock Island Downtown Commission yeah, the, came over and was like, talking to you and was like, yeah. you know, recognized you and was like, thanks for making an investment in, you know, our yeah. downtown and we, you know, and. Doing that I, I had met and... him once before I was charging the Tesla over at the chargers and he's like, thanks for using our chargers. What do you think? <laughs> and, uh, and he was, he's great. So we, we met nice and guy. we're, we're going to get together at some point, hopefully. And, but, uh, but you know, that we're, we're in a downtown area that has had some issues 
over the years and is going through this great revitalization. We need some new businesses down here, but you know, we were able to buy cheap down here, which is great. Um, and they can buy cheap too. Yeah. Give me some restaurants yeah. down here. I need a coffee shop. Where can I get well, a we, Manny we and a Betty? We do have two coffee shops that we like. So <laughs> one more wouldn't hurt. Let's get a trifecta. <laughs> like just a try, like a little coffee this is trail. This actually the only good coffee shop. Cause like other places around this area, the coffee shops are all either drive through. There's nowhere to sit down. Or they're yeah. just like, we serve a lot of energy drinks. Well, they all serve energy. The one, there's one. The energy. other one over here. I would so. love to see a brewery come down here. Well, we had I... two breweries that were nice and closed mm -hmm. down, but. We need more. <laughs> we need more. It'll get there. So anyway, that's my fresh tank was just uh, enjoying again, as we always talk, if you find yourself in small towns or just somewhere over the holidays or in general in, in a metropolitan area, try to take in what the community takes in. Local theater. Sports, a parade, go to a you know small business, a locally owned restaurant, things like that. So even the the folks that came and visited us here at the studio yesterday spent time in downtown Rock Island, which I really appreciated. They went to the art gallery. They yeah. ate at a local restaurant here. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, can, they you, you can have a lot of fun going to a high school football game in an area that you've never been before and spend yeah. like. Five dollars on a ticket and have a lot of have a good time. No, but my hope in the future is that while the Mile Zero Studio and coming here and saying hi to Jason and I might be the thing that starts bringing you to Rock Island, that once you come and visit us here in the downtown area, you will enjoy going to a local restaurant, to some of the shops here, to walking along the beautiful Mississippi River and taking in the Centennial Bridge, and that you know Mile Zero might be what starts your journey here, but that you realize that there's just so much more here to do and, and it becomes even more worth your while. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, it is. And of course, if you have any comments for Jason and I, the best place to reach us is in the RV Miles Facebook group. Come on over and join 13,000 of the nicest RVers out there. Just a reminder, Mile Markers, it's still a thing. We're actually, uh, Mile Marker Monthly Night Live is happening on Monday, September 9th. If you are interested in becoming a Mile Marker member, now is a perfect time to do so because we are getting ready to have our monthly get together. And after we're done recording this, we have to record Detour. And so Detour is a podcast we do for Mile Marker members. And what are we, what are we talking about? this week on detour uh, this week we're going to talk about uh it's sort of a flip of like conflicts in you know your relationship life uh we're going to talk about some uh some personal things about ourselves some pivotal moments in the history of jason and abby so people can get a little uh, deeper insight into us if you're interested in that sort of thing yeah so if you want to find out why one of my pivotal moments in our relationship involves jason showing up at my door dressed like a cowboy then you <laughs> <laughs> don't cut this laughter out because you need to understand jack don't cut this laughter out then you want to come over and i like caught my microphone and now my cord is cut you want to come over and become a mile marker member and learn about why for those who cannot see jason just turned a shade of red that was not previously it's there like, it's the last halloween costume i, I wore <laughs> Oh, oh, he wants to make you think it was Halloween. Okay, it was I Halloween. see how it is. RV Miles. <laughs> RVMiles.com slash mile markers to join and to get this upcoming detour podcast and more. But until then, friends, thank you so much for being here. Please continue to stay safe. Knowledge is power and keep logging those RV Miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.